Hi everybody and welcome to a very special painting tutorial. Today is Canada Day. I am Canadian and I'm going to show you guys how to paint my custom Space Marine chapter. I call them the Northern Fists, but if you can come up with a better name, please uh, write it in the comments. <clears throat> so this is based off of the Canadian flag. And so I figured it'd be a perfect time to show you guys how to paint this on Canada Day. Um, so this was a secondhand um, intercessor that I got from somebody. Uh, he had it primed in Corax white. Uh, decent prime job, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that we had a nice even finish of the uh, white. So I did a coverage of Ulthuan gray. Um, Corax white is essentially Ulthuan gray in a can um, with just different properties so that it primes the model well. Um, I don't normally prime in white, but uh, there is a lot of white <clears throat> in this uh, like paint style of marine, so it's a good place to start. So you'll see here, I, I like to start um, the red first just to get that out of the way, and I'm using Reaper Paints Red Brick. Um, so this is a very deep, deep red, and over white it looks purple, uh, just like a deep purple color. But this is a great way to start off with red. I've done it before in other videos. I like to use it on cloaks and whatnot. It's just a great way to bring it up to red without um, starting too bright of a red. And also, by doing this style, you don't have to use any washes, which I don't like to use with red very much. But you'll see here, you're just picking out all the different parts that are going to be red. I came up with this um, paint scheme actually when I was in high school. Uh, a buddy in high school showed me uh, a starter set of Warhammer and I thought it was super cool. Um, <clears throat> obviously I love the Space Marines and so I started drawing pictures of Space Marines and uh, coloring it in with my own custom chapter um, and since I am Canadian I wanted them to be Canadian. This is a part that I really wanted to show you guys. Um, a lot of times people skip over this but I know everybody talks about doing two coats um, this is why, because once you're done that first coat, it looks super splotchy. So I just wanted to show everybody what it looks like. No matter how good you are at painting, your first coat is going to look at, like this, which is why we do two thin coats, um, as Duncan likes to say. Um, but you'll see, once you get that second uh, coat of paint on there, it covers super nicely. And this is especially true with white, um, which is why I don't necessarily like to prime with white that much. But you especially need those uh, two coats because... Uh, white just shines through so much more. Um, but you'll see it's 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 much less purple once you get that second coat on. Um, yeah, you just, you'll see it right there. So much darker. Um, you can't really tell that it's a purple. It's just a really nice, dark, warm, kind of brownish. Um, now we come up one step above that with deep red. Um, this is another Reaper paint and it's a great way to start from red. Um, so now we're hitting everything we did, probably like 90% of what we just did with those two coats, but this time like 90% avoiding those recesses. And it's just a subtle transition from a really deep red color up to where we're essentially going up to Mephiston red. But it's a great way to transition into that. Um, so like I said, you're covering about 90% of what you already did. Um, this is not a quick paint scheme at all. This is just uh, the way I've developed this custom chapter paint scheme over the years. Uh, and I think it has really good results. It almost gives the armor like a round kind of feel to it. Um, it's it's like almost kind of like a blend, sort of. Um, but I'm just using very close colors. And it's nice to not have to wash the model. Um, so you'll see, especially on that helmet area, you can see the blend really nicely. So just avoid, like, any time there's a crack or something like that, just avoid the paint there. And you'll see there, it just brought it up, like, one tone. And now we come in with a Mephiston red, and this is the fun part. This is where you really start to see uh, the red armor come together. <clears throat> and you'll see it gives the armor kind of a roundness by coming up from uh, that deep, deep color. So there's a little too much paint on there. And again, you want to keep these paints thin. And yeah, you'll see there, just that nice bright Mephiston red. It's such a good color, um, but I don't just like to paint it straight. And that's why I developed this technique, because I didn't like the way it looked with washes over it. I don't really like doing pin washing too much, although I do a little bit of it in this video. Um, but yeah, you'll see 
you don't have to paint you don't have to paint the entire model with Mephisto in red. You can just paint those raised areas. And since you already came in with those two other red colors, you have this nice transition and it's very natural looking. And like I said before, it gives the armor kind of a roundness to it. You see, I'm just hitting up the uh, the shoulder pad trim. So this doesn't only have to be Canadian Marines. This uh, obviously can definitely look like white scars. Um, so this is a good way of painting white scars as well. Um, but I don't really like white scars that much. I, uh, I made these guys a successor chapter of the Imperial Fists. But yeah, you'll see. Now that armor looks so cool. Um, I love the way it looks, uh, you know, especially without washes. You just kind of get a nice true Mephiston red with natural, um, <clears throat> progressions in the recesses. So now I'm just going to hit up some of the black stuff. Basically his bolt rifle. Um, I like to do the in between the joints, um, that stuff I do black as well. And I'm also going to switch up the brush and go to a smaller brush, extra small artificer layer brush and get his black out his eyes as well. And you'll see when I do that, it's pretty messy. That's the way it's supposed to look. Um, oh, and you can see that little Primaris Marine in the background. I showed him in the first shot, but I was too busy talking. Um, I just wanted to show you what he was going to look like at the end um, as a little pre precursor. I also blacked out this little uh, screen that's on his arm. Uh, we do something fun with that a little bit later. So just because I had the blackout, it was a good time to uh, just get all those areas that are going to be black. <clears throat> and you see I get the behind the leg right there. But yeah, already, once you get that red armor down, it just makes the Marine look so cool. I'm just going to be doing some of the details. Um, and there's, you know, on any GW miniature, there's a lot of details on him. You can see all those little satchels, um, the golden or the, uh, the winged skull that's on his chest. Um... But yeah, you'll see me here blacking out his eyes, and I do a pretty messy job, but that's okay. As you, If you've seen any of my other videos, um, now is the time to get messy with the eyes because you're going to clean it up later. Um, but yeah, my theory behind this uh, Canadian-style Marine was uh, you just take a look at the, uh, the Canadian flag. You have the two red bars on the outside and then the white in the middle with the red maple leaf. So you'll see on his shoulder pads, that's kind of, it kind of echoes that, where you have the, the big uh, white area in the middle, <clears throat> and then you have the red on the borders of his shoulder pad. Um, so I basically tried to keep it, keep it like that throughout the mini. I think it came out pretty well too, especially since I came up with this color scheme in high school. I like, I like the way how it works now. But yeah, you'll see I'm just coming in with some dryad bark. I'm just getting some of these details now. So uh, dryad bark is a good kind of like, not too rich brown. It's kind of like a muted brown. Um, so it's a good way to, to do some of these satchels without making them stand out too much. Just because they're a secondary part of the miniature. I really just want his armor and his uh, helmet and those types of things to stand out. Um, also, like the, the black was drying, so I just wanted to get a couple other things in, uh, not wasting any time doing that. So yeah, he's just got this little gun holder. Got those other ones on the right side of his body. You could do these a lot of different colors, so I just like to do them brown. Um, that smaller tube looking one, I think it holds grenades, so you can do that one silver too, but I just kept everything brown. Now I'm just going to come in with some gold. Retributor armor. Um, get his chest flying skull thing, plus the little one that's on his forehead. <clears throat> now you might think, like if you look at the marine just straight on, um, that could definitely represent the uh, the maple leaf on his chest. And I was thinking about making that red, but I've never done it in the past, and I just don't like the way, like I've seen it on other. Um, Space Marines before where that's painted red, and I just don't like the way it looks. I think those things should be gold, pretty much standard. Um, is I guess that's their representation of like the Emperor and stuff like that, so I like to keep it golden. But yeah, Retributor Armor is great, especially over this Corax White Spray, because um, it pretty much gives you one, one coat coverage. See, I'll just get that real quick. And he didn't have many gold details, so it was easy just to pop those out there. Yeah, so he's looking pretty cool so far. 
All right, next up, I'm just gonna cover all the silver parts. Uh, one thing that I do love about Primaris Marine backpacks is that they're not as, uh, I don't know what the word is, just like, it's hard to tell which parts you want silver. So I just do most of it silver. Um, and then I just like to highlight a few areas on his gun. You can see me, I'm trying to decide which parts are supposed to be silver and which aren't. Um, I always forget. So I was referencing a picture, GW's website. But yeah, pretty much you want to make sure that the barrel is good, then the uh, the clip holder thing right around that. You can kind of tell, but you can also kind of freeform do whatever you want. Then I was like, I wasn't sure which parts of the, uh, the what's it called? Oh yeah, so there's these little things on the uh, on the helmet that were actually pretty tough to get to, so I ended up switching brushes and doing it uh, with a different brush. Um, but yeah, you'll see here, I just get the entire backpack with that lead belcher, and it looks nice. Um, I like the addition of this kind of big generator looking thing in the middle there, the big circular thing. I thought that was a good addition. Yeah, so you'll see here, I'm just gonna come in with the null oil. <clears throat> cover up all of those areas that I did with uh, silver. Make sure that's dry, obviously, so you can come in pretty heavy, just like that. Um, another thing at this stage is we're gonna start deepening the recesses of the, old, the white areas. Um, so basically, I cover the metal areas just to get those good so that they'll dry. And then um, I do something, I think it's called pin washing or something like that. Um, basically you grab a thin brush, load it up with uh, the wash of your choice and you just hit the, you kind of just hit the recesses. It's kind of a reverse way of doing a typical wash, which is where you wash the whole thing. Um, it's cool, but sometimes it can be a little bit difficult and the washes can be finicky sometimes. Um, and it was really hot today. So uh, I think it was affecting my paints a little bit. Um, but you'll see here, I come in with a thinner brush and I just get the metal by his helmet. And then you're also, oh yeah, I show here <clears throat> that you kind of get a nice little line in between the red and the ultho and gray on his shoulder pad, just so you have a little differentiation between the two. Obviously some of it is gonna get on the white area. So you're just gonna come in and neaten that up in the next couple steps. Um, but yeah, you can be super delicate about this, but I just decided to go over the whole face with it and then I'll come back over with the, uh, the ultho and gray and, and neaten it up a little. But it also helped me form the eye socket is just dumping a little bit of that uh, null oil in there. <clears throat> so yeah, this is the part where you're just coming in and covering up all the silver areas, but also getting any recess of the uh, Ulthwin gray. Yeah, I came in pretty hard with the face, but that's fine. You can just touch up with the Ulthwin gray, and if you get any on the red parts, touch up with that too. So you'll see, you can see a little bit of it there. But I figured now is the right time, right before we go into touch up the face is to uh, start doing the eyes um, and a good pretty much just use the color wheel when you're deciding what uh, eye lens color you're going to use so since this is red um, blue is going to be good uh, yellow would also be a good one but since I have the gold right next to it I thought blue would stand out better so I came in with Cantor blue thinned it down got out my extra small artificer layer brush and just did a decent amount of that, pretty much covering almost the entire lens, except for the back corners of it, because uh, that's where you want it to be dark so that it offsets that uh, thing. And then there's this, these buttons that are on his wrist guard. So I just wanted to get those with the same blue, uh, just to keep a matching theme there. But yeah, as I was saying with the eye lenses, so if you have a green mini, um, red works really well. Those two colors work well. If you have a blue mini, red works. If you have um, like Imperial Fists, you can do blue or red. Um, but just use the color wheel and, and kind of go opposite that and that should give you a good color. Obviously red and blue go good together so they they offset each other. So you'll see me just coming in with a little bit of a line of the uh, Hoeth blue and that's just to accent the eye a little bit more. Um, and Hoeth blue and Cantor blue work really well together. See that eye lens, it's really popping out now. And you just go maybe like 30 to 40% of the lens with the next color up so that you still have the black in the in the furthest re, you know area. 
and you, then you see the middle blue so it's just, just like a uh, transition like we were doing with the red now we come in with the uh just pure white do a little dot of dot of that in the darkest area boom and that just gives you that kind of glowy gem effect type thing extra small artificer layer brush is the best way to go about doing that and this one actually came out really really good i was really happy with the way his uh, right eye lens came out. Yeah. So yeah, now is when we start touching everything up. <clears throat> we go back to that Ulthuan gray. I'm gonna be focusing mostly on his face and what I show you guys. Um, and the Primaris faces are really fun to do. They're pretty simple. Um, so you'll see I just come in underneath his eye lens, tighten that up a little bit. And it just once you get the Ultwin Gray in there, it just helps the eye pop a lot more. And they have this like grill kind of in the front. You just do a line down the middle there. And then you they have these like already in their lines, and you just kind of follow those lines in there. And this is the point where there's gonna be a lot of like little uh, spots of null oil and maybe some red all over your white areas. So you just come in there and neaten it up. So right here, since I have the extra small artificer layer brush, I'm just following the line of the shoulder pad um, where the null oil kind of got out of hand. Um, but yeah, just go all around the model and you'll see the model is looking really nice now. So now we're just gonna be doing details almost for the rest of the time. <clears throat> and I'm also gonna show you how I freehanded a maple leaf, um, which was, I've been trying to do that since I was a kid and it's always been difficult. And this one came out pretty good. Obviously, if you stare super close at it, you'll see the mistakes, but um, for the point of having it on a miniature, it's fine. Uh, but you see here, I'm just throwing some Zandri dust on the, uh, what are they called? Purity seals. Um, and then I do corn red because it's a little bit pinker than your Mephiston red. So it'll stand out a little bit from the armor. Um, and just put that on the wax part of the purity seal. Um, yeah, so this is how I do his little screen on his arm. I do the triad of Incubi Darkness, Cal Cabalite Green, and Cyberite Green. So it's I did it like kind of all three in a row. I'll show you how to do it. So you'll see his little screen right there. You do like 60%, uh, maybe less than 60%. Cover up like half of the black, just in an L, um, like that. Yeah, probably like 60% 60 of the screen. Just doing an L like that. Inky Bark Darkness is very dark, but it's a good transition from the black into this lighter green. Then you see I come in with the Cabalite green and do a thinner line in that same L shape, just on that bottom part of the screen, then coming up on the right. And then you're just getting a nice little transition and it looks like almost like an old timey computer screen. I don't know why they would have that on their wrist. They're super advanced, but that's what I've seen in other pictures, so that's what I'm doing. Then the cyber, cyberite green, um, you just do a thin line of it on the corner. So that gives the screen like a glow. And then I also decided that it would be cool to have like little writing, little computer writing on the screen too. <clears throat> so I do some thin wiggly lines of that just to give it a little bit more visual interest. But uh, yeah, I think it looks really cool. It's a nice little accent on the mini. You'll see it's like he's getting information in from the battlefield on his little wrist thing. Um, but yeah, so now there's just a couple things that I have to throw some more shade on. Um, we've got the purity seals. And you can just do it over both parts. You don't have to get all fancy and do a different wash with the, uh, the red part. So just cover that up. And then I go in and I do it on the um, golden Aquila thing that's on his chest. Got a little bit on the white, but then I decided that it would look cool with the differentiation anyway, so I just went along with it. That's just to tone it down a little bit. It's a little bit bright and shiny, uh, taken away from the miniature a little bit, standing out too much, so the Agrax Earth shade comes in and just dulls it down a little bit, but still keeps that nice gold. <clears throat> then I also take this opportunity to, I did the dryad bark on the, the little satchels that are on his belt earlier, so. Just go ahead and cover those with that Grex Earth Shade too. All right, so now we're gonna finish up this red armor. Um, it looks good, but we gotta take it to that next level. So we're just going to want to do a 
and I'm not going to say thick, but not super thin edge highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet. I find Evil Sun Scarlet to be not enough of a transition from the Mephiston Red. So I think maybe I should pick up some of that Wild Rider Red. Never tried it before. Um, but, you know, I went around the whole model doing this and I just didn't see enough of a difference of variation um, between that and the Mephiston Red. And brightening up reds is kind of difficult because you're probably either going to get it to be orange or pink, and I didn't want either of those. But here's the final edge highlight on the armor with Fire Dragon Bright. You're just hitting the corner corners of this. So anytime there's a right angle, like on his helmet there, I'm just going to hit that with a very thin line of Fire Dragon Bright. You really, especially when you're going to orange as your final highlight, um, you really want to uh, keep this thin because you want the red to stay red. You don't want it to be orangey. If anybody knows a different slash better way to uh, do your final highlight on red, if you could just leave it in the comments, just because I've always done Fire Dragon Bright, and it looks good, but I don't know. I feel like you can. there's, there's a different way to go about it, like maybe a flesh tone. I'm just not sure. I haven't done that much research into it. Sometimes I just leave it without the Fire Dragon Bright, because I think the red is such a vibrant color that it looks good on the tabletop anyway, so you don't really have to do much to it. Um, but it's good, and I wanted to show how to do it in the tutorial. So I'm just coming in, hitting all those right angles, making sure that I make his face pop, because that's that's the uh, the heavy metal mantra, faces and bases. That's what's most important on a mini, so take the extra time and, and do those up real nice. Okay, you see there? Just keeping the lines real thin. Keep your paint thin. You can get it on his hand. I like to get this right angle on his hand here. It's just a cool thing that I've seen in a lot of the GW pictures. So yeah, he's looking pretty awesome right now. Just got to do a couple more things. We're going to come in with some Eschen Gray on his uh, gun casing and the, uh, the sight of his gun as well. But Eschen Gray is very close to black. Um, but it's a good way of giving a little visual appeal to anything that is kind of black, because black can be a little bit boring. Um, we're just coming in, hitting anything that's a line. Just makes the gun look a little bit more interesting and shows that you put a little bit more time and effort into, into the model. But yeah, just doing a couple details here. Nothing too crazy. I usually stick with just this one highlight. You can you can go up to Dawnstone, but I don't think it's that necessary on a, on a gun casing. Uh, now I'm just going to do a little highlight on the um, Dryad Bark with some Bane Blade Brown. Just hitting the edges of it. Making sure you give love to every piece of the model. Came out a little bit bright, but I kind of, it was okay. I was okay with it. And again, you just, when you're doing edge highlighting, take your time. It's a lot of work, but once you step back and look at the model after you've done it, it looks really nice. All right, so this is the fun part. I decided that I was going to try freehanding a maple leaf. Um, so I just start here with a line down the middle of his shoulder pad because I knew I was I actually had a picture of a maple leaf out uh, from the flag. So. So yeah, basically I just wanted to start with the line right down the center of the shoulder pad. <clears throat> the line covers the middle kind of spikes, and then there's like the uh, the stem of the leaf that's at, coming out the bottom. So then I kind of come in with a slightly curved line, uh, not so it ends up looking like a sword hilt um, right there. And again, you just want to keep your paint real thin so it, it sometimes dries quickly when uh, when it's that thin. So you just got to keep going back to it. And I've got my thinnest brush here just so I can make sure that the angles look really good. Um, this is the first time I've tried this, so this is a little bit of an adventure. So um, it came out nice, but you'll see. Um, the Canadian flag is deceptively difficult to draw. And uh, <laughs> I learned that growing up trying to draw that flag. And in this case, I was trying to paint it for the first time. Um, but there's some little tricks you can do. So once you have that little sword hilt going, then you just do two more lines coming out like uh, right from that uh, 90 degree, almost 90 degree angle. So you just get both of those coming out and then you kind of have 
um, the basis of where you're of where you're going to want to go. Um, and right now it kind of just looks like a, a pot leaf, but, uh, which is apropos because Canada just legalized it. But yeah. So now, um, each of those three kind of points that are coming up from the sword hilt looking thing has three, uh, points to it. So I kind of put in these little hash marks just to mark out where I'm going to put them. The, uh, the first two, well, I guess the first four, the first four that I did came out good and they were in the right position. Um, but then the last one wasn't. So you'll see me have to fix that up a little bit. And it is difficult um, just to do freehand in general, but it's especially difficult to try and do it on camera. So I did as much as I could, as far as I could, and then I, uh, I had to go ahead and finish it off camera. But you can see this is the basis. So I have like that middle part, and then I have where the other three dots are going to go. Um, so then you kind of just start filling it in. You just take... You take each dot and it's it's they're supposed to be not as high as the middle one so that's another one that's another thing to keep in mind but yeah, I was surprised with how how well this came out you can see that that middle Canadian leap starting to take shape but yeah as I said earlier I call these guys the northern fists because they're an imperial fists uh, successor chapter um, and I, it took me a long time to try and figure out a cool name for them. Uh, my brother uh, helped me out. <laughs> he had some really funny ones like the Emperor's Lumberjacks, um, the Maple Marines. But none of those sounded really cool. So I just kept it simple with the Northern Fists. But if you, can, if you guys can help me out and come up with a cool name for my Canadian-themed chapter, please leave me a message in the comments below. Because um, Northern Fists is okay, but I feel like there's something out there that... That's a real winner. Yeah, I was just taking my time with this. It was the first time I'd ever done done something like this before, a freehand of a maple leaf. Oh, also, if you guys uh, know of anybody who does, you know, water decals with uh, with maple leaves on them, that would be fantastic. I would definitely take, take those. Um, but yeah, I was doing the same thing with the one on the left. Um, and I did a good job marking out where they were supposed to be because as soon as I traced it, you know, to the middle part, <clears throat> started to take shape and you can kind of see it already if you know anything if you've seen the maple leaf before you can tell that it's starting to take shape so yeah just finishing up that middle spike there and i know this is a lot on one part but um freehanding shoulder pads is it's just not something that i see a lot on painting tutorial so I wanted to share that with you and since uh, it was my first time doing it I thought it would be a cool little adventure for all of us to see how it came out yeah, just tidying up that little that little part on the bottom there it, it almost looks like the um, what is it the the black Templars uh, symbol it's like kind of a different take on them. And it just so happens that the Black Templars are a successor of the Imperial Fists as well. So actually the the real chapter that I liked that I wanted to be a successor to was the Crimson Fists. But then upon research I found out that they were a successor chapter to the Imperial Fists. So I just ended up being an Imperial Fist. And of course they got the worst chapter tactics in the New Space Marine Codex. But I kind of like it. Um, it's something that your opponent is not expecting is, oh, I ignore all cover. It's like, oh, it kind of, it almost frees up your opponent though. Cause they're like, oh, cool. So I don't have to worry about being in a building anymore. They just go out in the open cause they know it will mean it'll be no difference. Um, if they're in the open or not, cause you're going to be ignoring their cover. I always like to take, uh, their, what is it? Um, their relic. Their chapter specific relic it's it's a pistol it's called the spartian and it's just so lame and bad but i always like to take it just because it's funny it's a pistol i think it has two shots it doesn't have to target the closest enemy unit like i guess it can target characters or whatever but it's still just a two-shot pistol i think it might do two damage and it might be minus one ap but it's still pretty bad 
But yeah, so basically I took this maple leaf and I took it as far as I could get it on camera. And then I took the rest and uh, I did it off camera. But I think I did a pretty good job on camera for, for what I did accomplish. And the thing that I realized a while ago when you're doing freehand and just when you're painting minis in general is that don't be afraid to make mistakes because you can always just go in and cover it up. Like that looks good, except obviously I had to touch it up a little bit. You'll see right there, I touched it up with the Ultima Gray and it looks fantastic. I was really happy with how it came out. I'll do a quick turnaround. Just got to throw a base on this guy, but that's how I paint my Canadian Marines. Thank you very much, guys, and we will see you next time.